Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. Before we get to today's episode of finishing our designer tote bag, I would like to offer my opinion. I'm going to continue the discussion of rulers that we started last week. I was wrong. We were talking about block lock rulers and Deb Tucker rulers. And with respect to block lock half square triangle rulers, they are not size specific. You can cut a smaller half square triangle with a bigger ruler. I believe when they first came out, they may have been size specific. That's what I remember being told. I could be wrong. But in any event, today, they are not size specific, and I apologize for my error. What's most important is when you purchase a ruler that you know what you're purchasing and what uses you can have for it. With the block lock rulers, some of their rulers are not size specific, as in the half square triangle rulers, and some of their rulers are size specific like the flying geese rulers we talked about last week. In addition to the flying geese rulers, they're what they call the triangle in a square, which Deb Tucker calls the V-block. Um, those are also size specific. So it's just really important that you know what you're purchasing. Also, when you're comparing two rulers that do similar things, you need to know what other things you may be able to use them for. You don't want a whole box of rulers that you bought and used once and then have never pulled out again. What I love about the Deb Tucker rulers are that they have many uses. We've talked about her Tucker Trimmer 3. We talked about that last week. 24 sizes, half square triangles, quarter square triangles, and combo units. This is not the only thing you can do with these rulers. Her Cyclone block that I've showed you before, that also uses the Tucker Trimmer. What she calls the Shaded 9 patch, which is this unit right here uses the Tucker trimmer. The triangle pizzazz, which is either one of these two units, is also uses the Tucker trimmer. And her shaded four patch, which is this unit, also uses the um, Tucker trimmer. So there's way more uses for it than just the original half square triangles we talked about. Uh, the other thing with uh, the Deb Tucker rulers is people in the comment section mentioned that they slip. They do slip, this is true. There are many products that you can purchase that to put on the ruler to prevent that from happening. Deb recommends Invisigrip, which one of my beginning quilt making teachers also loves. There are other products. Grip strips. Oops, wrong side. Grip strips. Gypsy Quilter makes a, a dot. What does she call them? Grip dots. Another product's almost the same. True Cut, True Grips. And my favorite, brand new to the store, is Rough It Up Tape from Quilting Delights. I originally sought to put on rulers for machine quilting, but we quickly found that it works great on all rulers and it's very inexpensive. So we love this product too. So there's lots of things you can do to help the slipping issue. One last point before we get to our episode the one thing I didn't realize with the block lock half square triangle rulers is you cannot use it on uh, squares that you have pressed the seam open. It ha only works on when you press to one side. We've talked about that conundrum in quilting 
or argument. Some people say always press open. Some people always say press to one side. If you're a press open person, the half square triangle block lock rulers will not work. Um, and I'm almost always a press to one side, but when you're making a block like a pinwheel, you've got eight pieces coming into the center seam. This is a case where I would press them open. So the block lock ruler would not work for making these blocks if you want to press them open. So while the block lock rulers are great, the Tucker's rulers are great, everybody likes something different, pick what you like, use what you like, what works for you. Let's get our designer tote bag finished. Here's mine. I'm very pleased. I'm going to show you how to get here with the purple one we also worked a little bit on last week. Before we go to the serger, I just want to show you the quilt I have behind me. I, nothing in this episode has anything to do with it. This is the Curved Log Cabin by Janine Burke, and it's one of my favorites. I use leftovers from other quilts here and just the purpley blue uh, added to it. Just thought you might enjoy seeing it. Let's go to the serger. I've got the machine set up for a three thread overlock wide. I am not sewing two pieces of fabric together. I'm going to do that on the regular sewing machine. I am simply doing the finishing edge here just to make the inside of the bag look neater. I've done it to all the other edges except for the two I have here. And you can see that I'm not cutting a whole lot off. I'm just shaving a very minimal amount off and just making the edge look pretty. This one's done. This is the inside zipper pocket. I've done two sides already. I just have one side left to do. Be sure you have the zipper open when you do this. If it's closed, you won't be able to turn it right side out. Watch how slick this is. The blade cuts this, this uh, zipper right off. I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the body. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to go back to the cutting table to show you how we put it all together. Okay, we're going to trim off our surged edge here. It's on the inside. I'm not worried about having to run the stitches back through the back through the edge. I just put a little dab of fray check on and we're good to go. If you don't have a serger, see if your girlfriend does. If not, you can do a, a zigzag on your domestic machine, but the serger really does make a pretty edge. And now it's ready to be turned right side out. And then once it's right side out, we can sew it to our body piece that we just put the surged edge on. So I would do this nice and pretty and press it. But for demonstration purchase purposes, this is going to be good enough. And you would then sew this to the top centering it inside of your body piece. And this outside pocket would get centered to here and you'd sew this on. Now we've done this to the other side that has the outside zipper pocket and I have the 
inside not zipper pocket all sewn in here. I did trim this down a little bit so that I sew just up to the serged edge. So I'd have less bulk in the seam. And then you would take your um, strap that we made last time and center it over the edges of the pocket here. And if I were doing this now on the sewing machine, I would use some Roxanne glue baste it and glue this all nice and down so that it stayed shut the way I wanted it. And then I would sew up to here, stop at three quarters of an inch from the top. I'd sew down here and then a quarter inch away, like you can see on this one, where I have four lines of stitching on the strap. Once the straps are attached to both pieces, you then can put the whole bag together. I've got the bag body pieces right sides together. I'm going to sew at a half an inch seam allowance down each side. I'm going to press the seams open and then sew down those open seam allowances. You can see on the finished one I've pressed it and then I've sewn a quarter inch away from the center seam. You can see those on the right side of the fabric, but I don't care. I love the finished look of the inside of this bag. After you've finished the sides, you need to finish the bottom. Some people like to sew all the way through and then they call it a box corner, cut off the corner. I don't like to do that. I like to cut out a square. And on this one, I did a two and a half inch square. And then I sew just the bottom where the squares uh, are out. Then once those are done, you can meet those seams and sew them together. Let me show you on the finished one. This is where the square is cut out. I matched the finished seam of the side to the seam on the bottom and just sewed across. And I do that on both ends. Then you make sure you have your button loop sewn on the side that your inside zipper pocket is not on. And then bind around the whole top, just like we did all the binding of the pockets, same exact thing. And then I made a inside um, inside bottom of the bag, I used one layer of Annie's foam and one layer of Timtex, made a sleeve for it, put it into the sleeve, and that covers up that seam I just showed you of this one down here where you put in the, the corner, covers all those raw edges. You need to sew on your button. I sew whatever distance makes sense for the length of my loop. And one last thing, you need to finish this sewing on the top. Once you've got everything all finished, same thing you did down here, outside at the edge, quarter inch in, outside at the edge, quarter inch in, all the way from where you stopped at your three quarters inches, that's the last thing you do and your bag is finished. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make your own designer bag and enjoy. See you next time.